fellow viewers and welcome yet again to this episode of Dinner Guide. I'm your host Chef Andy and today as I mentioned on our promo we are going to be doing a very very simple stew. I'm also going to be showing you a simple take on jira rice and a very simple salsa to serve that with. But before further ado we begin by introducing the ingredients before us. So from the very front I've got a medium sized bullet chili, one teaspoon of paprika powder, and a small, about a quarter cup of basmati rice. You'll also require some salt for seasoning, a teaspoon of uh, dried oregano, one large tomato. You're also going to require a small bowl of cherry tomatoes, small handful will do, and a small uh, white onion peeled already. You'll also require some fresh coriander, one large carrot, about 200 grams of some beautiful mutton, you're also going to require two medium-sized potatoes peeled and washed, about two slices of uh, some ripe mango, some jira seeds to make your rice with, some water to cook your rice in, some oil to cook with, and last but not least, some peppercorns to crush. So we're going to take a short break now, allowing you to stretch, unwind and relax, and we'll catch you after a very short break. <music> Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you've just missed out on the introduction, we are doing a very, very simple dish today. And to start us off, we're going to proceed to begin with our mutton stew. So I've got a nice beautiful cut of mutton here, which I will first proceed to reduce in size. So this is, this is actually the rib cut of the mutton. Very, very tasty part of meat, especially if you know how to work your way around cooking it really, really well. And that is basically why I'm here, it's basically to take you through that. So we're going to start by splitting up those riblets very, very quickly. Now one particular good uh, alternative for meat, especially when stewing, very good to go with meat that's on the bone. Remember, it actually really makes a big difference and it also allows you to save up quite a bit on the expense of the meat that you're using. Second of all, meat on a bone will definitely cook into a stew really well. Remember, meat does have a nice beautiful marrow that once cooked very, very well, it will always give a stew a nice beautiful texture, feeling and appeal. So we're going to also be reducing some of that excess fat on our on our mutton piece. Of course, always making sure to remove any particular signs of sinew. And by sinew, this would mean the very, very grayish, whitish kind of fat. Remember that does not, di that does not digest very easily. And it also doesn't cook down very easily. So very important to take that out. And that will avoid you from having chewy bits of meat in your dish. Just to finish that last bit off. Right, so very, very crucial to make sure not to have any excess fat. So you can proceed to also cross check your meat, making sure to not have any excess chewy fat that may not actually break down while cooking. And you can now proceed to reserve the rest of the trimmings. And we're going to begin this very simple process by heating up a big pot on the side. To that you proceed to add some olive oil. Right, now next up we're going to also be doing a bit of rice on the side. So while that pot proceeds to heat up, 
proceed to heat a smaller pan in size and we're going to begin this very simple process by crushing up a few of our jira seeds. So I'm just going to measure out about a teaspoon. Right, so very simply with your mortar and your pestle proceed to grind those fennel seeds, of course taking your time to make sure to pop those shells very, very gently. Remember this particular method will always allow for you to really activate the flavors of your jira seeds. So you should actually be able to get a nice beautiful hint of the jira as soon as they start to break open. And once those are popped open, proceed to add those to your pot on the side. Very important also to make sure, always allow for your dried spices to just heat up on a pan. Remember this particular step really activates and brings out the, the more potent flavors and aromas of your spices. And it will basically be a very simple term we use in the culinary world as just basically activating your spice. So you'll be able to hear a little bit of popping from the pan. And those should actually color very, very slightly. Remember not to overcook this at this stage because it will carry a very bitter taste right through. Right, once those are in, proceed to add your rice. Toss that and mix through and proceed to add some water as well. Of course, making sure to add about double the amount of rice, uh, double the amount of water to your rice. That should allow it to cook really, really gently. Now we're going to move this to the side and allow that to continue to steam. But very importantly, never forget to season your water. Now to the second pot, we're going to proceed to add our chunks of meat. And all you're going to do now is proceed to brown your meat. And this would basically just be cooking down the fat. So toss those very, very gently in your pot. And always, of course, spread them out, allowing to make sure that each of your pieces touches the bottom of your pan. And we're going to allow that to brown undisturbed. While we do so, we're going to proceed to turn over our board. And very, very gently, we're going to, very, very slowly, we're going to proceed to prepare the rest of the ingredients for the stew. So I'm going to start by chopping up a carrot in half can chop that lengthways into about four strips each and proceed to chop those finely proceed to do the same for the other half of your carrot and once more Proceed to chop. Now your carrots are chopped. We're going to just move those back into the same bowl we had them in. And now next up, we're going to do the same thing with our potatoes. So very simply with the potatoes, proceed to cut them halfway lengthways and once Widthways, so should give you nice about four nice pieces. Set those aside, and you can now bring your attention very briefly to your pot once more. Right, so we're going to allow those to continue browning right up until the bones have got a nice beautiful color around them. 
We're also going to allow the rice to continue simmering until cooked. But while we do so, just going to grab a fresh knife and we're going to very, very simply proceed to do the salsa. So I'm just going to set my vegetables on the side. In this very simple process, you will require your cherry tomatoes. So begin by slicing those halfway. Now cherry tomatoes are particularly a favorite of mine. They actually carry a nice beautiful pungency in them. The juices are always very much on point and it really just brings out a very very beautiful flavor. And for this reason I'm going to be using it to make a salsa. Now a salsa would be something very similar to a salad. Just the only difference would be it's actually chopped up a little finer. So you should actually remember a salsa should have almost all the ingredients in the same size. If not all chopped up into small sizes of course. To that we will incorporate one white onion. Just beginning by cutting some slits over the top and proceed by just finishing that by chopping that very very finely. Remember one particularly good hint and one good uh, checkpoint for good salsa is a nice beautiful evenness in chopping. So always pre uh, proceed to take your time when chopping your salsa. Remember the presentation is all in the chopping technique and the precision. So it's something you don't want to overlook. Right, so onions in. Next up, we're going to also be incorporating some of our... It's going to give that a shake and allow that to continue. We're also going to be incorporating a bit of some fresh coriander leaves. So I'm just going to quickly just take off the stems here completely and just proceed to chop that as fine as you possibly can. Right, once done, add that to your pot, your pot with the onions and the cherry tomatoes. Now we're going to proceed to season this with a bit of some ground black peppercorns, small pinch of salt, and of course a generous drizzle of some olive oil. You can proceed to give that a quick mix with a spoon. We're just going to allow that to sit on the side very briefly while I bring my attention back to our pot. So as you can see the meat from the pot, from the camera there, the meat is now completely brown. A lot of the excess fat is also cooked off. And now basically this will allow for you to take your meat out very, very briefly, allowing you to allow your meat to rest before you proceed to build up your stew. So we're just going to grab a pair of tongs and move our pieces of meat into a bowl on the side. Now as I mentioned, you can actually begin the process by frying off your meat as we've done. This always allows for you to really just kill off all that excess sinew and fat from your meat. You can also alternatively just uh, steam up your meat in a pressure cooker. This will also allow for you to really just allow for your meat to partly cook before really stewing it and it will also save you time when cooking or in the long process. So now to the same pot, remember we are, we are going to be cooking all our ingredients back in the same same dish. So we're going to allow that just a few seconds to heat and while that does so, I will proceed to just slice thinly the rest of my white onion. Now proceed to add that to your pot. 
add also a bit of oil now give that a mix and just give your onions just a few seconds to sweat out and also just to bring in those beautiful flavors that were left off from the meat once your onions are succulent and juicy proceed to add your carrots and your potatoes and proceed to mix through now at this stage you can proceed to add a pinch of your paprika powder some bit of your dried parsley and of course you can also grab your button chili sorry your but your bullet chili slice that through the middle and just add that as is into your pot Right, once that's mixed through, very handy to have a bit of water. Remember, this will allow for your potatoes to soften a little faster, similar for your carrots. Now just proceed to give that a quick mix. And allow for that to, uh, to come to the boil. Now we already have our rice almost done on the side. The water is almost completely evaporated, but we will give it just a few seconds to finish. And while we do so, I'll take you through the last and final ingredient for your salsa, which is your mango. So begin by slicing your mango very, very thinly. Now about one slice of mango should actually uh, work for this particular quantity of a salsa. But there is one last and final ingredient which many of you may not have noticed is missing on our countertop. And this is basically for me to be able to remind you that this particular one ingredient is very handy, especially when finishing off your salsa. Also helps in really bringing the flavors together. And it also gives a nice, beautiful, refreshing finish to any salsa of that choice. So just finish chopping up your mango very finely. Once that's done, proceed to add that to your bowl. Give that a quick mix. Now for some of those who are still wondering what that main ingredient I was talking about a little earlier, that would be a lemon. Remember, lemon really brings out a nice, beautiful acidity to any particular salsa, allows for it to actually combine those beautiful flavors of the, that beautiful iodine from the salt, the beautiful sweetness from the tomatoes and the mangoes. Remember, the lemon will always just really lift up those flavors, allowing for you to really get a beautiful taste of everything. So with the aid of a sieve, Proceed to squeeze half the juice of one lemon. Discard the rest. Give that a mix once more. You can also give that a quick taste very refreshing very fresh and this will actually keep in the fridge for a little while which we'll be pulling out later to serve with now in the meantime i'll bring your attention back to the stew now your liquid is almost completely evaporated in the pot and your potatoes are now just starting to soften now we're going to proceed to add our meat chunks and add in the rest of our paprika powder. Proceed to mix that through. Now 
Now one particular thing to also mention, remember one particular characteristic of a stew. Remember this should be a liquid that's actually been braised, which means it has actually been cooking in some liquid. And this is basically what your water does. So we're going to proceed to add water right up until we get, or rather until we touch the surface of your mixture. Proceed to mix that through. And we'll now allow that to continue to simmer, allow for the meat to tenderize and allow for the mixture to really come together. And we're going to push that to the side very quickly. And now our rice is now cooked, so I'm just going to give that a shake to make sure the water is completely evaporated. Now a very, very simple technique, especially when working with rice, always handy to have a slotted spoon or even a fork. Remember, this allows you to fluff up your rice, making sure that your rice is not uh, cooked into a clump and that the grains are just nicely fluffy, well opened up, and the rice actually has a very, very beautiful consistency. So now our rice is done, our stew is on the boil, and our salsa is done. We're going to take a break now, allowing you to also refresh yourselves and just grab something to drink. And when we do come back, I will bring you back and show you what the stew looks like. We're also going to proceed to serving this very simple dish and I'll also share some very, very simple serving suggestions. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are just catching up, you may have missed on a lot of what we've done today, but remember we always upload our videos or anything that you missed out on our YouTube page, that's Brand Plus TV. You will be able to catch up on any particular details that you missed out. Now we're just going to begin to plate our dish. And I'm going to start off very simply by scooping some of my jira rice onto the plate. So about two little foods should do for one portion. Next up, we're going to also proceed to plate our stew, which is now done. I'm just going to turn that off. Just very importantly, always give your dish a bit of a mix before proceeding to plate. Of course, you will notice it is a bit of a chunky mixture because of the fact that we do have some of those matton pieces on the bone. And once that spooned over, remember we still have one more dish that we had prepared as well, which was our salsa. Very, very simply, as I mentioned, mix everything together. Allow for your mixture to sit and marinate in the refrigerator for anywhere between half an hour to 20 minutes. And once that is done, proceed to scoop that to the side of your plate. Of course, making sure to showcase your salsa with those beautiful cherry tomatoes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my very, very simple take on a mutton stew with jira rice and a very simple mango salsa. I hope you've managed to grab or grasp something from the show today that may be also new to your recipes at home. And I hope you've also managed to at least also be able to get the very simple technique of building a stew, very simple technique of also making a very simple jira rice and the fundamental part of the salsa, which was basically making sure that all the ingredients are chopped in a very, very systematic manner, 
a very similar chop right through. And as you can see from the plate, the presentation actually speaks for itself. Now we're going to call it a day and I'm going to dig into this very, very beautiful dish. And until the next episode where we continue to bring you some very, very beautiful tantalizing dishes from this very small kitchen of mine, I'm going to bid you farewell. And until the next episode, God bless and see you soon. Thank you.